In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this Next Steps booklet for your church using Canva. Hello, my name is Rebecca, and I help churches save hours of time and design by using professionally designed Canva templates. So if that's exactly what you want, you should subscribe and stick around. And in case you want more from me, I will link all my resources down in the show notes. All right, let's get into the video of creating this Next Steps template. And I also wanted to show you really fast that the booklet also has a presentation. So this is what that looks like. So when you are presenting um, to the class, then you can have this on the screen and then um, the people can have this in their hands. They can take notes in it, whatever they want to do. Um, so here is the slide deck that it comes with. And then it just goes, it correlates directly with the booklet, as we see here. Before I start, I wanted to also tell you guys that churches can get Canva Pro for free. And so I will have um, everything that I talk about, I'll have linked in the show notes for you guys. Um, so usually that takes a couple of days. Sometimes people said that it takes maybe a week or two to get approved by Canva. Um, but Canva is an incredible tool and resource that your church can definitely use. So I would take advantage of that. If you're creating this from scratch, here is what I recommend. You would go to home and then you can create cut the custom size. So sometimes you have like the, um, this is an eight by eight inch. Uh, this, so it's square. And then some people like to do maybe like a six by nine. So like a landscape. Uh, so whatever you choose to do, uh, I would say custom size and then set this to inches and then you would input it right here. So let's do uh, nine by six. Okay, and then create new design and then it would give you the blank, um, the blank canvas. Okay, but what I wanna do is show you guys, we're gonna be working on this template Okay, so once you choose the size that you want, then you're gonna go to File, Settings, and then you're gonna say Show Print Bleed. And the reason why you do this is because if you, uh, if you have photos, if you have, um, you know, like this color and then you don't have the bleeds, sometimes what happens is um, it gets cut off. It's right here. So you wanna make sure that everything extends past the page. So when they go to cut it, then everything that is important stays intact. <laughs> so uh, that's what bleeds are for, it's for the printer. Just a really quick note about why I set it up this way instead of on spreads. Uh, same thing. Unfortunately, Canva doesn't have the ability to do spreads right now, kind of like um, what you would have in Adobe in design, just kind of keep in mind that page two and page three are together. So this is one spread, page four and five, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how to upload your photos in the best way. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to projects, then you're gonna go uh, under folders, you're gonna say create folder, Okay, and then we're gonna call this church photos. Continue. Okay, so I'm going to go into the folder, then I'm gonna hit the ellipses and I'm gonna say upload files. And here is where they will all land. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on this box and you can move it over like this. If you don't like all of these photos, you can simply click on it and then hit the backspace or delete button. And then, um, you know, you can put whatever image you want to, or you don't even need an image. Um, but uh, here, uh, 
So, okay, let's say that you do want to have all of these photos. I'm going to drag and drop it onto my, uh, my original photos right here or the template, I guess. Okay. So now if you, okay, so obviously you can see that it's turning them all into black and white. If you want to adjust that, you can go to edit, adjust. I do have the contrast increased. Uh, and then you can turn the saturation up if you want to. But the way I have it um, is just kind of more for a unified look. Okay, so that is how you change the photos. If you want to move the photos around, so let's say, you know, I can't really see the singer that well, so I'm going to grab this little handle and then I'm gonna pull it down and then I'm gonna make them more uh, in the center and focused like that. Okay, so now that is how you, um, that's how you move the photos around. If you want a solid color, then what you can do is go here, transparency, and then you can increase it and then to 100, and then that will get you your solid color. Now I'm gonna show you something that will save you so much time. This is probably my favorite little hack, and it is changing colors and changing the font. Okay, so let's look at this little square element that I put on all of the, the pages right here. Okay, so you can see that. Now, let's say that I don't want it blue, but I want it orange. All right, so I have this selected and then I'm gonna click the orange button. Alternatively, you can, um, if you know the hex code, you can add the new color and just paste it right here. Or you can just kind of like move it. <laughs> you can slide it like that. Okay. All right. So here is where you can save so much time. At the bottom, it will say change all. So once I hit that, it says color changed across all pages. Then every single page, we have an updated color. So now I don't have to click and um, <laughs> like go back and change every single color. So um, that will save you so much time and you can even do it with like background colors. You can do it with text colors. Uh, another example, let's see like right here, color, orange, change all. And then it is applied to this. Okay, obviously do not recommend this. I can barely read it, so make sure that it's seen like a darker color that you can actually <laughs> read it. Um, to go back, I'm just hitting Control Z. If you're on a Mac, I believe it's Command Z. Now let's look at the fonts. We have Emmanuel Baptist Church, and it's Open Sans. So here's the font. Here's the size. It's in all caps right now, or you know, uppercase. Um, it's bold. So let's say that we want Montserrat. So I'm going to say Montserrat. Then I'm going to say change all. And then across everything is now Montserrat. That is so cool. That saves so much time. So I would highly, highly recommend doing, um, doing that, just, you know, selecting a color and then making it like change all. Okay. So huge, um, hack time saving tips. Um, I'm going to do control Z. So I get back to where I was. Okay. So here you can see that we have a photo of the pastor and his family. And if you have, let's pretend like this is the photo that we want to use for this page. So what you're going to do is you're just going to drag it over and then you drag it on top of the, um, of the photo. Then I'm going to double click. I can like move it around if I want to. And then that's how you 
Um, this is probably not the best example. Let me, um, here, let's use this one because then it'll probably cut them out a little bit better. Yes, okay. Um, maybe you could go like that. So what I did was I just dragged it and then I dropped it over the image that was already there. And you can do that again. Okay, so you're just gonna drag it over and then you can kind of give like, you can get that effect. I think I just like that. And then you can just kind of play with it. Okay. So here you can just kind of like finesse it. So this is a Canva Pro feature. And just to remind you, you can apply to Canva for nonprofits and get that for your church completely free. If not, it's $15 a month. Highly, highly recommend. So they have really great tools. Okay, so I'm going to go back on that. Almost there. Perfect. Okay, to change the background image, I am going to do something very similar to what I did in the on the cover. So I select the back and then I move it over. And then let's say that I want to use this photo. I'm going to drag it and drop it right there. Usually what I like to do is um, put the saturation all the way to zero, or I guess that's negative 100. And then, you know, you can move it around, obviously. Um, and then I can move it over. Oops. No. Okay, so it looks like I need to pull it out some more. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then I'm going to put this back. And then I kind of want to see their faces, so I'm going to just pull up right there and then drag that up again. Okay, so now I can see their faces a lot better. Uh, you can use a different photo for this background, exact same thing, you just drag and drop. Now let's go over how to put your people into their little circles. I'm going to go to elements, then I'm going to go to frame, and I'm going to choose the circle frame right here. Okay, and for the sake of illustration, I am going to go to grab, oops, not grab, <laughs> I'm going to man smiling, yes. Okay. I'm just going to use this as an example. Obviously, you're going to want to, you know, upload the people from your church. So let us go in here and I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab this guy, this man, and I'm going to center him like this. Okay, now I'm going to use the background remover like that. Okay, so you see how it made the circle. And so now what you can do is just align them together. So let's, so I'm going to ungroup this and then I'm going to take him out and then I'm going to put him in. Uh, so I'm going to zoom, zoom in too. So I'm going to say control plus so I can see this better. And then here, it needs to go down a little bit more that okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my cursor and then i'm going to drag over these two elements and then i'm going to go to position okay make sure that's centered good middle good okay so this is perfectly aligned now i'm going to group it so that when i move it around then i'm grabbing the whole group okay all right and then you would just follow the same thing for that uh, you can just see it's a, uh, you know, make Chris Ray, it's making up names. Then you can just input whatever 
the names are, titles, all that. Once you have that page done, that was probably the hardest, most complicated page. Here, you know, you can change the, you can change the fonts around, you can change the background colors, um, you can swap out your picture. For this, I tried to make it look like it wrapped around the photo, and all I did was um, hit shift and enter because Canva doesn't have um, like a wrap feature. So I just like, <laughs> I did it manually. Uh, you can do the same exact thing. Um, and yeah, like as far as the rest of the template, it's very much the same as the top, just going in, changing out the photo, putting it, um, putting this back on top. You can change the colors, the text right here. Um, oh, one thing that I did want to note is that, for instance, like this, like personal growth, personal growth right here, when you're exporting it, just make sure that, you know, it matches with the, um, the heading. So right here is community groups, uh, serving volunteer, serving volunteer right now. So, um, so when you're flipping through it, then you can know, um, quickly, like what, um, what section you're on. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, and yeah, yeah, so same same thing goes with here. Again, here's the transparency. And then you just you just plug and play, you put in your your text. Uh, this was written by a pastor and his staff. Um, so you know you can use it as your template. Um, here's some conclusion key key scripture references, and then the contact information is all right here. Once you have completed the design, you're going to go up here to the share button. I'm gonna move my head. Then you're going to go to download. All right, here's where you need to pay attention to the settings. So we're gonna to go to PDF print. Okay, this is future Rebecca, and I forgot to tell you guys a very important step. So after you select the PDF print, then you're going to want to select this box right here. It says crop marks and bleeds. Okay, let's keep going. You're going to want pages 1 through 16, so all the pages. Then you're going to select CMYK. This isn't as crucial, but I do think that it will give you the best coloring um, the closest to um, to the file that you're seeing on your screen. Okay. And then you're going to download. All right, so then it's going to download right here, and then it's going to go to your downloads folder. Once it's downloaded, that is the file that you're going to send to the printer. And you can either select a online service, or you can go to a local printer and work with them. I've done both. They both turned out really well. I can show you uh, some examples. This is with a local printer, amazing job. And then this one was uh, with Vistaprint. So I can link that, uh, link the exact book, or um, I can link the exact page that I, um, that I went to to create this. Um, you can tell I used like a glossy paper for this. This is matte, so it's not it's not as shiny. So yeah, this print did a really great job. Uh, the colors turned out really well. So I would definitely recommend this print if that's more in your budget. So if you want to work with a local printer, what you want to do is email them and ask them for a quote for a eight by eight, 16 page booklet. And this is saddle stitched, so right here. So this is how they connect it right here. So with staples, same thing, Vistaprint did a saddle stitch. Those are my printing recommendations. And again, all of these resources and templates are gonna be listed in the show notes. I hope you got value from this video. And if you did, comment your favorite blue emoji below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.